This 71-year-old man has some risk factors for heart disease, overweight, sedentary lifestyle, and untreated diabetes. Using tomography, medical staff are imaging blood flow in and around his heart. Here at the Yawkey Center for Outpatient Care at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, researchers in the emerging field of metabolomics will also analyze metabolites in his blood. What we're looking at are chemicals that are downstream of everything that we eat, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So we're looking at amino acids, various types of lipids, for example. Every metabolic process in the blood produces chemicals. And metabolomics is the systematic characterization of all of these chemicals in the blood at any given time. So metabolomics has this sort of fancy name that's associated with genetics or genomics, metabolomics. But ironically enough, this notion of biochemically characterizing people is, is an old one. And actually Linus Pauling over 50 years ago suggested that if we could characterize the chemicals in people's breath, actually, that we could understand what was going on inside of their bodies. Wired to an electrocardiogram, the patient walks on a treadmill. The researchers are also studying how exercise affects metabolites. Well, clearly, when one exercises, there are a number of chemical shifts in the body, and people have known this and they've characterized several classes of small of compounds that change in the blood. Our goal was to do this sort of take it to the next level and do it in a systematic way to look instead of at one or two or three or four metabolites or chemicals to look at hundreds and hundreds of these changing in the blood all at one time and then to marry that information with clinical information in terms of how much the person exercised, whether, how their heart performed, how their lungs performed, how their peripheral muscle performed. The investigator. Uh, Gersten's colleague, Gersten's Gregory Lewis, a former Olympic rower, studies the metabolomics of exercise. Exercise, uh, both in health uh, or in extreme health, if you will, in terms of a competitive athlete, but also in terms of how exercise uh, is relevant to unmasking disease states, uh, such as uh, myocardial ischemia during exercise uh, or uh, inadequate performance in patients that have medical conditions uh, like congestive heart failure. Glucose, for example, is a metabolite that tells us about diabetes, for example. Uh, creatinine is a metabolite that tells us about kidney function. So there's, there's plenty of examples of small molecules that are very good kind of barometers of, of health. Uh, or of certain disease states. And it turns out for exercise is the, is the same case. Uh, when we look at 300 metabolites in the, in the bloodstream, uh, we can define signatures of certain metabolites that are higher in more fit individuals and other metabolites that are lower. Uh, one example is um, a metabolite that changes differentially when more fit individuals exercise compared to less fit individuals. That metabolite, the name of it is glycerol, and it's a, it's a really very good indicator of how well uh, we can draw from our uh, fat as a source of fuel uh, during performance. Of course, based on my own background and interest in exercise physiology, we're also very interested in, in moving this to if we can help uh, personalize a um, metabolic supplementation for individuals that are elite athletes. Um, we'd be thrilled to be able to do that. And can we use that information um, in order to potentially improve patients' cardiac performance, uh, not only at the level of an elite athlete, but also at the level of somebody that you know, may have difficulty walking across the room because their heart's not working as well as it should.